So let us learn this principle. Let us try our level best in every situation. Even when you are doing something that you know that you can do it very well. Those are the moments that you are most uh, vulnerable. You are too much exposed in situations when, where you think you are in control. And I've seen that in life, even in our uh, spiritual walk with God. Uh, we are more exposed when we get into territories where we think we are in charge and we are in control. And when you get into another territory where you know you're not sure, you pray before getting into that uh, territory. So you see now that when you're about to get into something and you've been trained to do that, you are sort of like very much confident that you can do it even without you praying. And then that's where Satan himself will take advantage of us because he knows that when we are getting into environments where we know we are in charge, we don't really pray, we don't really fast, we don't even uh, seek uh, other people's uh, contributions because we are too confident that, ah, I'm used to this, I can drive. At any time, I've been driving for years. I've never had any accident ever since you started driving. So you don't regard that as something that you should pray for you before you drive. So the, the devil himself would take advantage of those situations and he knows that you have been doing this for a very long time and now you are very confident with yourself that you can do it without God, without help, without anybody assisting you. And the enemy will definitely then come after you and attack you at your strongest point. And then he will bring you down. But every time when you are getting into something that you have never done before, in most times, you pray. You pray. So the devil will never attack us in those areas where we, we pray first and we ask God for guidance. He will not attack us in those areas. But you get into territories, territories where you think you are in control. And the devil knows that you don't pray much and then he attacks you. So you need a person in your life that can speak into your life even when things are good, even when things are under control. Have that person, respect the person, honor the person and let the person know that uh, you have officially invited him into your life. It has to be known the person who is advising you, if he knows that he is not known anyway, he doesn't really take a good care of you. It has to be official. You have to openly say it. Like myself, my spiritual father, I don't just mention that ah, I've got a spiritual father, I have a spiritual father, his name is Prophet Kusivuate. And he is my father. Now, if I don't declare that publicly, and if anything goes wrong with me, nobody's going to blame him because he's not known. It's like, let me give you a very good example. There are moments when I'm prophesying to people, myself. And I call out a situation and I'll begin to get into people's lives, trying to guide them and to instruct them so that they can get their answers that they've been looking for. And certain people, they don't prefer that kind of prophecy that comes in, on, on public. The majority of the people, they would want a situation where you can invite them and you can sit down and then you can begin to prophesy and tell them what God is going to do and what they have been doing and so on and so on. And most people, people that can say no to you when you are prophesying to them publicly, they can say yes on a private place. So people are not comfortable. They need the prophetic, but not everywhere. There's a special place. Let's have a place separately away from people. Then you can say whatever you want to say as a prophet. They are very much comfortable. And yet this is the problem. If I come to you and then I tell you 
in front of everybody that I'm seeing a situation and this is a disease that I'm seeing and God is telling me that you are HIV positive and everybody is there and is listening right and you feel uncomfortable with that and you prefer you coming to the office and I'll tell you that and then pray for you when I say that when every other person is listening and then I declare that as long as I am still a prophet ordained by God I'm going to pray for you now and make sure that you get your healing right just because of the audience and the multitudes of the people that have witnessed the prophets I'm pushed by the grace of God to make sure that that healing is confirmed because then after prophesying to you if you die every person that was there is going to begin to question my prophetic grace and the power of God to heal the sick that is over my life but if I can prophesy to you privately I don't have any mandate there is no push you see if I prophesy to you and everybody's listening and I'm telling people that you are going to make a million dollars before the end of this year I will have then to see to it that you get a million dollars before the end of the year for the sake of the people so if I prophesy to you we're not talking about prophecies here okay but but I'm just trying to to make you understand how good it is if you declare a person before the people that this is the person that is helping me to do what I'm doing. 